Hello and welcome to Telesur. I'm Ian Bruce and this is Interviews from Quito, the programme where we explore some of the big challenges facing this country and the region. In today's programme, students back on the streets here in Ecuador, as in Colombia and of course in Chile. They're mostly protesting against cuts in funding for public universities. But could they take the lead in developing a broader resistance to the return of austerity politics? To talk about this, we're joined by Akangao Viteri. He was one of the organisers of the demonstration here in Quito, and he's a student of sociology at the Central University. But first, let's take a look at this video. The Faculty of Jurisprudence within the Central University of Ecuador was the meeting point for hundreds of peaceful and organised students to express a clear message to President Lenin Moreno. No cuts to public and private education in the country. We are gathered here against the budget cut that the current government wants to make to the public and private universities. We are against the cut of $145 million to Ecuadorian education. Ecuadorian students from public and private universities in the country demanded they are extremely concerned about the general budget for 2019 indicating that 10% of the budget was subtracted from the previous year and it should be returned to higher education institutions. They added that it is necessary to increase the budget and to expand access to the higher education system. Today the students have decided to take over the public spaces of our city in order to demand that the government think this over well. They better not mess with education. Ecuadorian citizen, the students will be organizing marches around the country. This is a government that is against the people. What we're seeing now is cuts in public spending on education and health. That's what we're experiencing. This is outrageous because they are prioritizing the needs of the economic elite and not the needs of the people. The peaceful protests throughout the main streets of the historic center in Quito marched towards the government palace with the intention to meet President Lenin Moreno but the Ecuadorian police prevented students from advancing. The police has always been the tool of oppression towards the people. Today, for example, we can see that they didn't allow us to enter. Those in uniforms also have children studying and yet they still defend the oppressor. The students also proposed a discussion table including all sectors of higher education to discuss the budget. They also have warned that this is the first mobilization of several that will be held around the country against the budget cut, proposed by the Minister of Economy and Finance, Richard Martinez. Thank you, Akango. Let's start by explaining to our viewers, what were you protesting about? All right, uh, thank you for having me. Um, everything started uh, when the executive power of the central government in Ecuador is sent the, on the 31st of October the budget for next year and in that budget there are significant significant um, cuts to the, to the budget for education in universities uh, public schools and also other social programs so that really uh, sparked up the alarms in, in the educational uh, movement in the student movement so that was the motive for us to, to education, education as a whole, public education as a whole, it, go, it goes up, up to more than $300 million uh, for next year, the cuts. Uh, those are very significant. Given that the last government, uh, those were the education was one of the sectors where more money was invested. So in addition to that, uh, these cuts for more than $140 million uh, just for just public... Just to get the scale of that, that's what, almost 10% of the that's university budget? Uh, that's 25% of the 25%. university uh, budget uh, in, in the whole, uh, of the 100%. Uh, that, that's uh, pretty high. So that's why we find it unacceptable that the, that the public university, the public education is being attacked like that by these policies that only represent uh, the violation of uh, fundamental right as, such as education. But who would be most affected by those cuts? Uh, well, as I mentioned, uh, the public education as a but whole. which sectors, um, what kinds of activities? Um, well, first of all, infrastructure. We have a, a very a, a kind of a crisis of infrastructure in, in public universities uh, around uh, the, the country, not all, but most of them. Uh, 
You mean the buildings? Uh, yeah, the buildings, uh, the seats, the desks. Uh, for example, my university, some uh, faculties don't, need, don't even have laboratories with proper co computers. We don't have uh, a steady in internet connection. So taking away the budget will, will, will make things worse uh, for a public university. Um, but also what I want to also to stress is that um, this doesn't only affect the public university, it also affects uh, the public the public health system because the cuts in the health system are, are also very significant uh, for next year and right now uh, the budget for next year is it's, it's being treated in, in the in the parliament so we have different actions we want to take uh, so that this budget proposal for next year is rejected in the parliament but just staying with the university mm -hmm. budget itself I mean, after the Monday protests, the government met with a number of rectors from public universities yes. and they seem to have agreed to withdraw mm -hmm. those cuts. So that's a huge victory, isn't uh, it? Yes, it is a victory uh, for the Monday protest. Uh, we were over a thousand people uh, protesting on Monday. However, we have some doubts about that uh, meeting because uh, we, weren't, we were never informed uh, from our uh, rectors of the different universities that that had the meeting with the central government and the meeting was held at night and then by Tuesday morning uh, we found out uh, by the headlines of the press, not even by our rectors, that the budget for education next year uh, will not be cut off. Um, however, that's very suspicious because uh, we believe that we should have been informed about the meeting and we believe that we should have partici participated in the meeting as a But as what, what a, is as suspicious? I mean, okay, you weren't invited. I understand mm -hmm. you're not happy with that. But why do you suspect the decision to reverse the cuts? Well, because what should happen now b of, mm, that they have reversed the cuts in the public university is that the parliament should give back the, the budget they are debating now uh, in the different commissions of the parliament. Um, however, they are not doing that. So. Um, what are they debating if in the budget for next year it uh, still stipulates the cuts for the public university? So, so you mean the, 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 the budget which is being debated in the National Assembly now mm -hmm. still has the 145 million cuts? It still has the million 145 cuts. million cuts. Uh, so we believe that the obvious thing to do would be that the Parliament, the, nation, the National Assembly should give back uh, the budget proposal, send it back. To send the it back uh, and make an, and, the, and, the, and the executive power should make another one, so that uh, the general assembly um, debates on, on the new uh, budget for next but year. Can the parliament remove the cuts? No, they they they, they, they cannot do that. What they can do is uh, make ob observations on, on the on the budget proposal for next year, and send it back with observations to the exec exec to the executive. And power. then the government could remove the and cuts. And then the government could remove the cuts. But of course you don't necessarily trust that. Uh, no, because also uh, today uh, several students uh, are meeting with the Commission of Education in the National Assembly to discuss, to discuss uh, just these parts of, of the cuts in the education, in the public university. However, we, we haven't been informed exactly under what conditions uh, those students are going to be debating, are going to be participating in the budget for next year because as we, we, ha we, we kind of know that uh, the, general, the National Assembly, sorry, um, most of the congressmen and congresswomen uh, want to approve that, that budget. So we're very worried about that because as I, as I mentioned earlier, it's not only a, a, a struggle about nation, uh, public education and free public education and quality education, but also about the health system, about the housing system that the, gov the, the government promised uh, in campaign that is not fulfilling those promises. But do you think it's the job of the student movement? I mean, I can obviously, you know, as Ecuadorians, you may be concerned about cuts in health or cuts mm -hmm. in, you know, other public services. But is that the job of the student movement to campaign or protest about those other kinds of cuts? I believe so, yes, and we believe so also because when we uh, sent out the invitation to the protest on Monday, um, we weren't protesting only against the cut in the 
university sector. We also, we, the, 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 for example, the title of the march was against the, the, the budget for next year uh, as a whole, because we are aware that uh, cutting, uh, I mean, we have fathers, we have, we have parents, we have brothers, sisters, and cutting the funding in the university, for public universities is going to affect all of them as well as cutting the funding in the, in the health system is going to affect all of us, not, not only uh, students or not only, uh, for example, people of the third age, that we know that next year, uh, supposedly, the pensions are going to, to, to come down. I mean, they're not going to increase it and they're not going to keep it steady, they're going to lower it. So that also, that fits in, in in our struggle because we have to remember that we are a community of, of the academy of the universities. So the university, the academy has to be involved in every sector of the society because we are that critical space that maybe society needs. So as a student movement, have you linked up with other social movements, trade unions or, or other social movements to campaign around those broader budget cuts? Uh, we are trying to uh, connect uh, with other um, sectors of, the, of society such as what you mentioned um, but it's pretty difficult because things are moving really fast uh, in the National Assembly from the central government and I, we believe that they are moving things very fast so that they can get approved this budget uh, for next year. So, for example, the next actions that we're going to take, um, we're going to march to the National Assembly on Tuesday, uh, which is the day where the whole parliament is going to debate uh, the pro form for next year and we're going to be vigilant to see uh, so that would be just students marching uh, yes just students however like I said we're trying to get other people to to get involved for example uh, for example um, the same people that marched on, on, on Monday there were these these union of, of nurses that were marching as well um, the teachers are also marching because their, their salaries are not being um, uh, raised up like they should be by law. And we, we're still f trying to work with, with other uh, unions. However, it's very difficult be because not all of them uh, want to uh, go to march. Not, not all, all of them want to protest uh, as we do. I want to turn to the movement itself, the student movement itself, because if I'm not mistaken, we haven't seen student many student mobilizations in recent mm -hmm. times here in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. So how did, how, did, how did this emerge? You know, how did you organize that demonstration, for example? Well, the, we, we emerged uh, last week <laughs> uh, when we uh, called for a general student assembly in the university. Um, we invited other faculties to, to join the cause. You this was in sociology it started? Uh, yes, this started in sociology and political sciences. Um, so, for example, uh, these years, this, this last uh, 10 and more years, uh, there, there, haven't been, there hasn't been sorry, uh, very, a very organized group of students. So, if, if for a good cause we're, we're doing this, we're marching, we want to organize as a, as, as a student, as a student movement, um, we still have many gaps to fill in because many students are very young and many students don't have that motive uh, to march because, um, for example, times have changed a little bit. That's their argument. Um, however, little by little, day by day, with every work that we're doing, uh, we're getting stronger. But we still have some resistant from resistance from other uh, students. What, what, what kind of methods of organization did you use? You know, I mean, was it the old-fashioned, you know, mass meetings, leaflets on the campus? Uh, are you using social media? How, we, are you, how are you doing it? We're using a lot of social media, and, um, well, mostly Facebook. And also, uh, the, um, for example, the committee that organized the, the march on, on Monday, uh, we divided that so that several people uh, go faculty from faculty uh, explaining what's going on, explaining what this reform um, of the budget means, how it affects us, how it affects our parents, and, and so that with that context, invite them to the General Assembly, invite them to, to protest, 
and also n inviting them to be part of the process of organization of the student movement. Because here in Ecuador, we don't have the history of the student movement like in Mexico or perhaps Chile or now in, in Colombia that, that the, the, the protests are, are very, very hard. Um, however, we, we believe that we are um, we're certain that only by protesting uh, things will change um, we can make a change uh, protesting and, and, and against not only the, the, the budget because the, con the political context of what's happening right now with this budget for next year, it's the law of productive development that the, that the National Assembly uh, passed a few months ago where they basically condoned the debts of the bankers and so that's, that's something that makes us really, really angry. Were you surprised by the response? You say it was organized in a week, essentially. Uh, yes, we were very, very surprised uh, because over a thousand people protested on, on, on Monday. Um, and for example, yesterday we had an, an emergency assembly um, because of, of the agreement that the 20 rectors and the government reached. Um, however, we want to have details of what, of what happened in, in that meeting. So what was the mood like in that assembly? And they were pretty angry because they were kept in the dark about that meeting. And we believe that we should have been informed and we, and we should have participated in that meeting. Um, because, like I said, we're not only talking about the education, we're talking about other sectors uh, of social uh, programs that the government should provide as a fundamental right. I mean, education is, is a fundamental right of our constitution. And in our constitution, we also have the right to protest if we believe and if we see that education, free education and quality education are being targeted and are being, uh, and being attacked by these cuts. What's the structure of the movement? I mean, do you have elected leaders, a formal kind of structure, or is it fairly spontaneous? Or? Like, since this was spontaneous, since we weren't really organizing um, up until we saw the cuts in education that are, were being uh, suggested by the executive power, uh, we, we didn't have a very solid structure of, for example, uh, leaders chosen uh, democratically in a general assembly. Um, however, we are, w everything is really fast, so we are trying to organize um, in a way that we can be effective as well, because it's, it's not only about uh, chanting in the streets, it's also about being uh, smart, being but, intelligent. But how is that organization developing? What, what shape does it have? Well, we have, we have divided into different commissions, uh, logistics, uh, communication, um, so that we can have a, ver a very massive uh, group of people that can, that can protest with us in next Tuesday or any other actions that, that we have um, that we could do in the future. Um, however, I just want to um, make it clear that we're not working with the uh, Federation of Students uh, nationwide because they, they, we believe that they are negotiating with the government about this budget. However, we are not being represented by them because they don't inform us anything. And when these cuts were announced, um, they didn't do anything to organize us. So as, as students, we weren't presidents, presidents of anything, we were just regular students. We decided to organize and that's why it's very difficult still to, to, make, to make everything structured and in a structural shape. I wanted to ask you about the, the relationship between this new movement and traditional you know, party, political parties, political currents, because if I'm not mistaken, the Federation of Students has been or was for many years more or less dominated by a particular political current yes. on the left, which um, actually was quite opposed to the government of Rafael Correa mm -hmm. and had lots of... So what is the relationship of this new movement with existing political parties, political currents? That is a challenge that we have because uh, the organization that started last week uh, that, in that, the, or that we organized also the march on, on Monday. Um, we are not accepting any political flags, any political um, movements that 
can get involved in the in the organization of the students that we are leading. Um, but if I'm a mem if I'm a student and I'm a member of this or that left wing group, the I can take part in your movement, right? Uh, yes, that's that's the on the only um, thing that we ask is that uh, we are not partidist. And so, if for example, if you are from left, right, or I don't know, uh, Alianza País or MPD, uh, you you can you you can march with us, but you cannot. Um, chant the, the songs of your political party or, or, or take the name or, 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 or take credit for, for, for the march in the name of your political movement because we believe that that can, that, that can set us off the, 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 the route that we're, that we're tracing for, to reject this, this, this budget for next year. But some people However, have said, some people, some people have said that, you know, the Citizen Revolution movement mm -hmm. was very influential in this new student yes, movement. It was. However, we're being very, very careful with that, and I think we are succeeding a little bit um, because, honestly, we don't have any um, political interests or any uh, political parties behind us, behind the, the people who organize the march on Monday, the same people that are going to march on Tuesday. Um, we don't have political movements behind us, pushing us and, and, and influencing us. However, there are other political, uh, student political movements in the university that are organizing their, their own protests and their own marches um, on, on, on the side, but we don't want to get involved with them because that compromises the, legitim the legitimacy of our movement and of what we are... Impact, you do need to be as broad and unified as possible, right? Yes, of course. However, we've tried to be friendly <laughs> with them. Um, however, for example, many people didn't march on Monday and now they are going to the media and saying, oh yes, we organized uh, the march on Monday, which is not true because they weren't even at the General Assembly. Uh, they weren't even at the meetings that we um, called for uh, in, in the whole university. So that's why we decided to, to be apart from them uh, because we don't think it's healthy for the, for the student movement in general. Um, they do have some people, however, um, other students prefer to be with us because we, we're keeping things strictly um, of the st student movement. We're not with the people that, that sympathize with the, with the government of the last 10 years or with the current government or with other, or with other um, political parties because like I said, that compromises the legitimacy of our protests. You mentioned the student movements in Colombia and other parts mm -hmm. of Latin America. Do you have contacts with them? Uh, we have contacts also uh, with, with Mexico, but not, for example, in a direct way. We, ha uh, we have a friend there, who she studies here, but she, she went to study there uh, a year. So she's helping us um, giving us ideas of how they, they organized in, in, in those countries. However, if, if I may be honest, um, the movements in Chile, in Colombia, in Mexico uh, have really uh, given us a lot of, to think about because we are so passive. We, sometimes we act like we don't care anything about what's going on. But of course, now they touched the public university and, and now we, we jumped. But um, it's striking, isn't it? The, 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 the the protests in Colombia, just in the last few weeks, mm -hmm. were huge, and that the themes are almost exactly the same. You know, yes. it's reductions in the budget for the public universities, uh, other austerity cuts imposed by the government. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of common ground there, isn't there? I think that's the context right now, the political, the polit political context right now uh, in Latin America, because. We have that uh, Piñera is again in, in, the, in, the, in, Mexi in Chile, sorry, uh, well, Duque in Colombia, in Brazil just won Bolsonaro, uh, here Lenin Moreno, so there, this is like this domino effect that um, these austerity cuts um, all, always aim to the social programs, no? and well, social programs include a free quality education for all. Um, so we're we're which seeing, is which is a Chilean slogan, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> which is, um, it's very. I mean, we we're very angry because 
those are the, that's the north, for, if you may, um, of the neoliberal um, economic program, political program. Uh, turn rights into privileges, turn rights into businesses. And okay, so we, we, won't, we won't allow that. The, <laughs> I the, think we the, won't allow so that. So you're saying the attacks are very similar in these different countries. Yes, yes, they are. But isn't it then necessary for the student movements in those countries to somehow link up and coordinate? I think we should. I think the historical moment uh, demands us to link up with other countries like it happened 100 years ago with the Cordoba reform. Uh, where uh, from Argentina spread to other countries in Latin America. So I think we have to recognize the, the historic, historical moment that we're living um, because we cannot um, allow the governments, these right, right governments, these neoliberal governments, to make services out of rights. Um, so I mean, the, this, is the op this is the, the, the optical opportunity to link up with other universities as it happened a uh, hundred years ago or as it happened in May of 68th. I mean, um, it's, very, it's a very exciting historical moment for the student movement, I believe. It's interesting you put it like that because in general, the left in Latin America now is pretty depressed. Yes, Yeah. it is. Uh, you know, the right has obviously scored some big victories, in some cases the extreme right. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that students could become kind of the, the, the catalyst of a new resistance movement? I believe so, because like I mentioned, it has happened before. Um, the context, of course, for example, in May of 68, uh, were very different because we had the Vietnam War going on and many um, student movements protested against uh, the Vietnam War and well, in the Cordoba reform, uh, there were very structural demands. And right now, uh, that's, that's why we have to think about make structural demands, because if we just um, focus on something that happens in, 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 in a month or two months and then it, it's, it's over, we're not going to make the changes that we're demanding. So I believe that it is a, an opportunity to link up with other universities. However, um, and, it, and this is a, a little disappointing because many students don't seem to be interested in what's going on politically. I mean, they sh could comment like, oh yes, they're going to cut the funding, but we still don't have a good room with computers. I mean, it's also, it's also a struggle inside the university with the authorities of our university. I mean, it's, it's like this chain that comes from the central government cutting our funding to the rectors and and deans that do not spend enough money, do not invest, do not invest in enough money in, in the infrastructure, in investigation inside the university. So, I mean, it's a very broad uh, uh, thing of, of, of tr that we have to, to fight against. And however, right now there, there, there seems to be this anesthesia in, in, in the young uh, students that don't really don't, they don't really care about what's, still, what's happening. I'm, I'm afraid we've almost run out of town, but nonetheless, yes. to, to get quite an impressive demonstration on the streets in one week, that's, that's an in interesting start. Yes, it's a very, very good start, but not every night is a full moon night. Um, so we have to be very uh, sharp about what's going to happen. And just uh, one last comment, I think that um, as, a, as a student movement, I mean, in my personal position is that I, I, I kind of reject the meeting they had the rectors with the government because it was, he it was, held, it was, it was held at night. I mean, I always say when those meetings are held at night is because they're hiding something. Um, we don't know what they negotiated. We don't know under what terms they negotiated. We weren't informed as a student movement. Um, so we're going to keep our eyes wide open to see what's ha what happens in the next weeks because I, like I said earlier, it's not only about free public education, it's also about the health system, it's also about the housing system that are things, are promises that are not being held by the actual government. I can go, thank you very much indeed. Thank you Ian.
We've been talking to Akangao Viteri about the student protests here in Ecuador and in other parts of the region, a new student movement against austerity. Thank you very much for watching Interviews from Quito. I'm Ian Bruce. Until next time. Thank you.